Hey guys, my name's Nick, this is Walter, and welcome back to the shop. I'm working on building a uh, L-shaped workbench for some of my benchtop tools here in the background, and I wanted to move some outlets and add an additional one um, to be able to power some of them. So I thought it might be worth taking you guys along and showing you how to do it. So I'm going to start this by adding the obligatory uh, safety spiel about only do this if you feel comfortable with doing so and your building code allows it. I'm not going to be the guy to tell you how to do it and that this is the, the end all be all of it. But what we're doing today is I had an outlet down here which I moved up there and then I added another one just over my left shoulder here. Um, I think it's pretty common that workshops or just garages in general will have the outlets a little bit down lower but when you're working at a workbench, it's ideal to have it above so that you can just plug tools in there while you're using it. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I like to do is measure and lay out where I want the boxes. The measurements themselves aren't super necessary here because they're going to be different for everybody. But I like to put a mark where I want the middle of the box to be. That ends up working out pretty well. And then the next step is to drill the holes. I usually use three quarter inch bit, um, but down to a 5 eighths would work fine and up to a 7 eighths would work fine too. 7 eighths seems to work well if you're running two wires through. And then because the studs are exposed, I'm just using a cheapo new construction box here. And what I was trying to show you there is that there's a little lip on the side of them and that helps you line it up with how deep you should have the box pretty easily. And next we're going to turn the breaker off so that we can work safely. A little trick that I picked up when working by myself is I'll actually plug the vacuum in and test the breakers because you can easily hear when the vacuum shuts off. That means you got the right one. So with the breaker off, the first thing that we're going to do is unattach the outlet from the box itself. And then I noticed that this is one of the outlets where the wires plug into the back versus screw into the sides. And so I just cut these. I really don't like these kind versus the kind that screw in on the side. So that's what we're going to put in. And I positioned this box just like I did the last one and feeding that cord through and snipping off the extra from what I need. And then cutting the sheathing away from about the whole area that is going to be inside the box. It's not super necessary and the wires bend better into the back of the box when they're individual as opposed to all together. I'm going to strip about three quarters of an inch of the protective coating off the white and the black wires and then run the new cable through the new box and into the current box. It's easier to connect the outlets when you have all of the wires right there ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the ground wires together. And then I'm going to orient the white and black wires so it's a little bit easier. The white wires are going to both go on the left side, one on the top and one on the bottom, and then the same black wires, respectively, are going to go on the top and the bottom of the right side. The way that I remember it is black to brass, and then white's just the other one. And this is where it comes in handy to trim off the excess sheathing at the very beginning because now as I screw it in, those individual wires will fold just fine and find a place in the back of the box. And because I had the room, I left a little bit of slack in that first feed through and that allowed me to measure more exact length when I got done with it. And I'm just going to go through the same process of cleaning up the wires and, and stripping the ends off of them. And 
And connecting the outlet, I'm gonna go through the same steps as I did last time. The only thing that I'm gonna do differently is connect the ground wire to the green screw on the bottom. And I found it's easiest to do this first because it's the most out of the way wire. If you do the black and the white first, then you really gotta stretch the ground to get to it. I know this was a simple process for most people, but I hope that at least somebody found some value in it. If you did, I'd welcome you to like and subscribe for more. This is going to be part of a workbench video that I've got going on right now. And here we are testing it and making sure that it works. With that, again, thank you and have fun building.